Minecraft prisons. They look pretty impressive. And from the inside, they are pretty complicated. But I made my own. It took a lot of time and a lot of effort. But I now proudly present to you Alice's Revolt. The cell is basically the same as in every prison. And the chunk ban layout is also the same. We have always on outer chunk bands, talkable inner chunk bands, and a suicide switch which will permanently ban the entire prison. But this can only be controlled by the main warden. So, what makes Edison's world so secure? Well, first of all, we have a really secure lockdown system, a lot of overpowered kill checks to make sure you definitely have no items on you and a cell that is indestructible, infinitely generated and it takes 4 hours to break a block trap portals in the roof and a roof player detector it will get detected if you try to spawn a wither and the always on outer chunk bands and toggleable inner chunk bands and of course we have an inside nether portal and a 6x6 and the right fault board that can only be controlled by the portal guard. And we have a secure entrance as well, in the fault style. So I think we can all agree, it's pretty secure. So now let's finally take a look at the visiting process. So, first of all, the warden has to give the player access to enter the prison, um, enabling him to bypass the outer chunk bands that are normally always on. Then, he can walk through the entrance and he has to. He comes up to this vault door. Then, there are two enderpearl stasis chambers. He has to choose one of them, it doesn't ma really matter which one he chooses, and he has to throw his ender pearl inside. Then, he can message the guard that he's ready. The guard would then have to flick these levers to open the inside, outside and outside portals, and then the player can walk through, put his gear in the locker and walk back through. Then he will enter the prison. He will be followed by a guard. This guard will make sure he doesn't do anything that he isn't supposed to do and he will open the netherite vault door. Then they'll walk through it together and follow the hallway. In there, they will execute the first kill check. The guard and the player will be separated. Then the guard will open the doors of the kill check, put the player into crawl mode and wait until the guard sees that the player clicked the bed. This can be seen by the click animation of a player once the bat is clicked. Then the guard closes the doors again and kills the player using harming potions. Then the player will respawn inside of a tunnel. Then he can walk through into another hallway which will eventually lead to the second kill check. For the player it's a pretty long trip. But for the guard, he can just end the pearl into the main guard walkways and then go all the way to the other kill check guard room. Then he basically follows the same process. He opens the door for the kill check, maybe he disables the play detection protocol if he didn't do it already, he puts the player into crawl mode and then once he clicked the bed, closes the doors and kills him. So, just like the previous time, the player will respawn inside of a tunnel that is located above the bed. And then, the player will basically walk 
into the next hallway. But it is the player detector. So the guard needs to enable the protocol and this will basically check if there's more than one player on the pressure blades. So if this is alone, one arm sounded and he can walk through to the third and final kill check. And he follows the same steps again. Open the doors, put him in crawl mode, and then kill him, close the doors again. And then the guard needs to walk to the next area, just like the player himself. But he needs to walk through the hallway that's located above the bed. So, the next security measure is a lava bar. This lava bar is to make sure that there are no players trying to sneak in with invisibility potions. Because if you didn't know already, even with invisibility, you can still see the lava particles. So the god will press a button, splashing the player with a fire resistance potion. And it will also open the doors of course. Then the player can walk through it. The god will be able to see if there are more than one player inside of this walkway. Then the guard walks to this room and then throws his ender pearl inside this stasis chamber. Then he climbs up the ladder, stands on the netherite block and presses the button. This will drop him inside of a room and also open the door where the player is standing on the other side. So now they are in the same room. The guard opens this door with his keycard and then gives the player two ender pearls. One for the status chamber and one for the crawl space located next to the room. They'll crawl through together and then they will enter the bedroom. So if it is a prisoner, he will have to follow another step, but I'll cover this more later in the guard video. So the player will click the bed and then the guard will follow him down into the shaft to kill the player. Now the player will respawn in the prisoner's cell. So with all of those security measures, let's try breaking in to Edis's vault.
still. An alarm got sounded and you got instantly killed. So, we can all agree that Addis's vaults is really secure.